Welcome back to Feel Free, the only podcast that'll tell you to chase your dreams, call you out on all your bullshit, myself included. We've got a very special episode today. I was actually feeling like switching it up. We're going to do an episode on anime, not specifically anime, but how anime has impacted my life in a positive way and also my brother's life. I got him here today to talk with me. We wanted to talk about how some of our favorite shows and characters have either given us the motivation to achieve a better state of wellness, and honestly, it was a very big part of my sobriety, too, but we'll talk about that as well. If you haven't already, give us a like, subscribe, and follow on all your favorite listening and social media platforms. So without further ado, let's get into this. How you doing there? Joe? Yo, what, what up, up, what up? You like these new mics? Yeah, it's just super tight, man. Right. It's fucking yeah. nice. Like it. Hopefully I can like rock back and forth and still. I mean, it's <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I guess. Probably can with this. It's very, it's very high quality audio now. Nice. Making um, some moves. I see you. Right. Yeah. I actually just got a new desktop as well. We'll be getting the video up and going in a couple of weeks once I decide to deal with that bullshit because I'm not hiring somebody to do it. But right now we're just going to be doing the audio as usual. We're here to talk about anime and how it's played an integral role in, you know, like I said, sobriety and wellness. So I guess a question for you and I, we'll just start here is when did you, when did you start watching anime? Yeah. So it's been quite some time now. I mean, I'm 28 right now and I think, gosh, probably like sophomore year of college. Right. So I think I was maybe 20 years old when I watched my first episode of anime. You're 20 years old? 1920-ish and around okay. that. Yeah, so about eight years ago. Right. Um, yeah, it was, it was cool. I mean, I definitely grew up with more of that stigma of, you know, man, anime is lame. That's like for people that like are, are nerdy and just like... <laughs> like Western you know, style. Gamers, like all that type of jazz, right? And um, never really actually like put the time in to like think, man, how like how intricate the plots are and just like, you know, everything that kind of goes into it. Right. I mean, I grew up on like American cartoons and, and sports. Those were basically my, my two like choices when it came to TV, TV. Right. Yeah. I mean, nowadays you have all these streaming platforms, right. Netflix, Hulu is all those. So in terms of just the different variety and genres of shows that are available to everybody now, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's but, endless. Um, yeah. Anime was definitely, not as popular or mainstream, I feel like, back in the uh, no. late 90s, early 2000s no. as it is today. So Yeah, it's um, way more popular now. Yeah, that, that popularity is just like skyrocketed. And so I'm super glad that I actually got into it when I did because right. now, you know, a lot of my friends are starting to watch it and it's like, yeah, they know, <laughs> yeah. They know what's up now. Right. You know. It took us a while to get Kath to watch it. Yeah. And it actually took me a while to get Will to watch it too. Yep. So I started watching when I was probably like five or six and I was just watching like Toonami, you know, cause that was like a, a program that came on after school on Cartoon Network. Yeah. I used um, to like, whenever you would watch it, I'd be like, all right, yeah, I'm going to go down and watch yeah, sports. You'd always dip out. <laughs> Screw this. Me and Phil would stay up late to watch it too. Um, yeah. But back then I was watching things like, you know, the, like Dragon Ball Z was big and that was honestly one of the stigmas that people, that turned people off from it. They're like... Oh, they're just yelling. Right. Right. And they're fighting. Just macho men right. fighting. Yeah. All that jazz. But it was just like, like when you're six years old and like you see that, you're like, that's crazy. Like, I want to do that. Yeah, like, that's I badass. Right. I wanna... Like, I want to be powerful. You know, yeah. I'm just some skinny little six year old. Right. Yeah. Um, so it just started out as like something very, it just started out as something cool to watch, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, through high school, I watched like Full Metal. And Cowboy Bebop, Inuyasha, and those things on Toonami late at night. But that was when I started watching anime when I was five or six. And with you, it was like 20. Uh, the next question I had was like, well, for you, it's it's more of a question for me. It's yeah. like, when did I start watching it differently? Right. Right. Now, when I watched Full Metal in high school, like I was still watching that one specifically. Right. Like mm -hmm. that one like kind of solidified everything for me. It's like played a huge role in like how I like view the world. And like my life, definitely. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, but it wasn't until I was like nineteen or twenty that I actually attempted sobriety for the first time that I started looking at anime differently. Mm -hmm. And it was because after I had watched 
I'd only like watched like full, like the ones I named, right? And the first one I watched when I had to get sober for the first time, right? Because I had failed out of school. I could only like hold down a, a meager part time job. Just doing like, the bare minimum and as a yeah. contributor to society. Well, it was at the all time, I was right? like actually capable yeah, of, you know, just right. because of the, the psychosis. Yeah, just, and just copious amounts of drugs. Right. And just, like everything I had dealt with, like, like so detrimental to me that it was just a miracle that I could even be like a functioning member of society right. at that point, you know? Yeah. So, like, I had to reevaluate everything and like go in a little hermit hole. And I was actually going to be doing separate episodes <laughs> of, um, just the chronicles of of evil is what I was going to call them, which would be like everything that kind of led me up to here. Because mm-hmm. I did get invited to be on a different podcast, and I'm going to have to talk about my story in my book as well. Nice. And yeah, there you go. I haven't like talked fully about everything on this podcast. It's been more general wellness and like having conversations with people. But so the, there was that point where I was trying to get sober for the first time, and I didn't have anything to do other than play video games and, and watch anime, right? And- You're really just trying to pass the time at that point from not trying to use, right? And then I started looking at it differently because the first thing I had watched was Attack on Titan. And that shit rocked me, like, to my core. That one hits different for sure. It does, and it's just, like, full metal, too. So the whole basis of, like, like freedom is, like, such a huge thing in the show Attack on Titan Mm -hmm. because it's... You know, it has to do with humanity's, like, last stand against these giant right. man-eating titans, right? They're just pretty much locked in, inside these walls, just, like, you know. Right. There's so many. That's And that's, like, a whole concept that we could get into right now. Like, the analogies yeah. oh, in yeah. anime and, like, the themes that they talk on and stuff. Like, if you... Like, it's not just a kid show. No, like, I've absolutely had, like, not. I've had people, like, different family members and stuff, like, they know you Kath, and i and all of our friends like we all watch anime Mm -hmm. and they think it's like that's for the the amount of times people have said that's for kids it's just like i'm like really like it's just like like you watch reality tv show 100 percent. you know like the bachelor bachelorette i can't even stand it it's like so fucking scripted does that really make you think about life right and i think that's one of the cool things about anime is it really just like makes you question ponder different aspects of of not only your own life but just like the the lives people live around you around you and all that right it 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 really is quite fascinating because that that stigma of like oh my gosh kids for kids or it's you know this that and other whatever that looks like right it's like until you actually sit down and like digest a full like fledged good writ well-written anime, well-written anime you won't you know, understand you just don't you won't understand right? right and it's just like if you give it that time and in and, and with how much people watch tv nowadays right, right. like i mean i don't want to know how much tv or just any type of screen content that average american consumes on a weekly basis a lot. but yeah if, <clears throat> i think if more people kind of ventured down that that anime path we would see just so much more you know creative masterpieces i mean western 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 media can definitely like take some notes from it for sure sure, yeah in terms of storytelling Um, yeah but the thing with uh like like getting sober that first time and like watching Mm -hmm. attack on titan like the theme of freedom just kept coming up over and over again and like for somebody who is like struggling with being free from their addictions right like that thing was just replaying in my head over and over again so it was like the main character is like trying to journey outside of the walls that protects humanity and fight these titans at the same time you know which is like a dangerous thing and to somebody who is addicted to drugs and alcohol you found comfort in those things right Mm -hmm. and to get sober and start over like that's a scary thing for an addict right because it's a very vulnerable thing so especially when you think in the moment of of those drugs you're like man i feel so free and like right like that freedom feels like it comes from within and it comes from the substance itself right but that was only the initial parts of using yeah right the pleasure aspect right and then years later after you're like oh no i'm actually trapped yeah like watching that had just kept replaying in my head like i need to get outside of these walls that i've built Mm -hmm. you know and i had viewed like the titans as like urges to use and i had taken these analogies across numerous different animes and like use that as fuel 
for like overcoming the urges and addictions. Yeah. Like I could literally name like 10 different animes in which I had used that method to like propel me into my sobriety, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. That's why it was such a, it it was so crazy because I couldn't watch like American television and get that. Like it's an eye opening experience to, to be able to just like take and consume that content and then like apply it to your own life right. and your own struggles or your own, you know, positivity, like anything going on in your life. Right. So I think like that aspect is, is freaking awesome. I know for me, it's just like, it's been a godsend to be able to just like cry my eyes out watching some anime, like a little <laughs> yeah, bit, you, you know really, what I mean? Yeah, it's just like, really about that. it's like, you just really don't know how you're going to react to some stuff. And there's some really heartfelt moments, moments in, in, different animes that'll just pull on your freaking heartstrings like it's no one's business right right? and um i think that's what's so awesome about it like you could just sit there and just be bawling your eyes out and then like walk away from it feeling so refreshed and rejuvenated and just like want to like take on anything that the world throws at you that that day what's the word for that cathartic i think is called is it really yeah cathartic is uh, like uh releasing emotions yeah and that's definitely what it is for yeah. sure. Like definitely have cried to some anime. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, yep. it's just a good way to express that. So we had talked like about when we started watching it. And then we talked about this stigma too. getting Will and Kath to watch anime was difficult. Oh, yeah. Right. And because of that stigma we talked about. And then those two now, when you talk to them about it, like it's totally changed their lives right. as well. You know? Yeah. I mean, Will powered through 700 episodes of one, one piece in, in like a month span <laughs> yeah, right yeah, so yeah. it's like yeah it is a world record might not have been the most healthy thing to do right. definitely would not recommend that to no. anyone out there but no you know he was uh going through his own his own stuff and i'm sure that helped him tremendously right um so what are the list of some of your favorite shows then yeah i think off the top of my head, like number one's got to be Hunter Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, you know, Hunter. absolutely love it. I think just that that journey of the main characters, right? When you think, I would say Gone and Killua are probably your two main characters of that show, right? And um, it's cool because they're two kids, young, you know, young teenage boys, right? Like 12, 13 year old kids who grew up two completely different backgrounds. Gone lived on like a fisherman like um port and island that didn't really have like too many families that actually lived there. It was just a lot of like importing and exporting, right? Didn't really have any friends. He kind of just roamed the island and in the jungles as a kid and right. chased animals around and stuff like that. Then you have Killua who grew up in a assassin's family. Family, like family and, of like, assassins just trained. like does not show emotion whatsoever and like detaches emotion to anything he experiences in the world and tries to think of everything like objectively and logically right and they meet and just go on this amazing journey together and i think like that journey and just like watching them like how their friendship develops is just like it's such a wholesome thing it is it's super wholesome and like they all they both have their own struggles obviously but um i think just just watching that over i think it's about 160 episodes Um, yeah it's a it's a longer one for sure yeah and in everything they go through and, and just all the feel good moments, fighting is really cool. So I'd say Hunter Hunter is probably definitely number, number one. one for me, right. especially because it's not complete yet. You know, I really hope the writer gets to finish it before he passes away. I know he's pretty badly sick and uh, he is he is writing it right now, trying to finish it up. So that'd be really cool to see that yeah. come to completion. I'd say after that, Full Metal, you know, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, yeah. just absolute banger of a show. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, that one's, yeah, that's that one's up, be up there. there yeah. right? You know, one that's not complete right now, it's actually in, a, it's currently running is uh, My Hero Academia. I love that. Definitely took me a while to get on that one. <laughs> I'm so shocked <laughs> yeah. that you said that because we tried to get you watching yeah, it for years. Ended up, so I got COVID, what was it like last year, around New Year's last year when yeah. there was that big wave. D- was pretty much asymptomatic, didn't really have symptoms or anything, but um. I had to take a few days off running. My coach was like, yeah, just to be safe, let's um, let's just take like four or five days off from running, see how you know, you're know you feeling. I'm like, ah, fuck. All right, well, now I'm screwed. I can't go out and work out and run. I just have to sit in my apartment. So I was like, right. you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch my hero. So I ended up just knocking that one out in like five days, getting caught up with it. And uh, 
the freaking storyline with All Might and um, his symbol to society and what he stands for and just like the younger generation looking up to him and all, you know, all the people and just that the hero society and the villains, all that, right? I think if you're a big Marvel fan and you like superhero type Man, if stuff, you like Marvel, you'll like My Hero. My Hero is just like... For sure. You know, it blows Marvel out of the water. But it's like, yeah. If you, if you like dude, that. Dude, those are fighting words yeah. to people over here in America oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'll my t- God. But I, I, I'm not a big Marvel fan. Yeah. And a lot of people know that. Well, a lot of my friends know that. Yeah. Not a big Marvel fan. My hero's up there for me. And yeah. You got to, Attack's got to be up there too. Attack on Titan is just, yeah. what a piece of, you Peak know, art. fiction. That's what they say. Yeah. It, yeah, it's it's just so well done. I think uh, a lot of people take for granted some of the artwork in anime, right? And um, I oh, think man. Attack, so some of the videography and just some of the angles that the camera captures is just like nothing you've ever seen. There's one scene specifically, I think Levi is chasing somebody through through the town yeah right? that's crazy and you just see it from his perspective when he's right. on like the odm gear flying around and kind of uh, like spider-man through the yeah, buildings it was, and stuff it was just so well done you know they're finishing up the last season so that'll be really cool so yeah i would say we got hunter full metal my hero attack gosh i really like it's such a weird one to think about now that i'm saying it but like cowboy bebop just hits so different than some some of the other animes i've watched like those four that i just listed out are like super intense like those are crazy plots those like are called you know, shonens yeah though. yeah, yeah like, those are shonens and uh you know they're great in their own way but like cowboy bebop just like man if you're ever like just not feeling too good you're, you got the <laughs> case of the blues like just throw on an episode of cowboy bebop and just like dive into that world and, and with for, spike and jet and for, just for our music. listeners though oh. you have to tell people that this is the animated one we're talking about we're yeah, not talking about right. the live action one. Yeah, I actually did not get around to seeing the live action one. I heard some shitty Mixed things thing. about yeah, it. So I, got, I was like, Ugh. I got like Do seven. I actually watch it. I got like seven episodes into it. Okay. So there's only ten. Like I should. I am gonna finish it eventually. But like, dude, that thing can't even hold a candle to the original. Yeah. The original is just... is one of the most profound things. You know, because you have it's such a deep show, right? You know, and that's something we were talking about earlier is like the themes that these shows like touch base on. Yeah, you know, like especially for like Full Metal and Attack, those are like honestly, those are up there. Like, oh yeah, w- almost one and two for me. You yeah. know, but Brotherhood's number one. Yeah. It's not even close. I wouldn't have so many Brotherhood tattoos all over me yeah, if, I, I was gonna say. if I didn't, you I'll know. Tat it up, right? I'll, yeah. But Cowboy Bebop's so cool because I never thought I would like a show like that I've been, where I it's was, just episodic, right? Like, yeah. And you told me, I'm like, yeah, fuck Dude, that. I was trying fuck to get that, you right? and Kath on that and, for a um, long time. I just want, like, I'm about the journey. I want to see, like, the character development and like start to finish how how things progress right and you don't really get that cowboy bebop because it's an episodic show you don't see the development of any of the characters you don't see like this plot like this is like their goal this is what they're chasing here's some of the hurdles they have to overcome you don't get any of that but what you do get is just like this great snapshot into a character who just seems to be like characters yeah all of them right it's it's they're all dealing with normal i'd say like normal human like the normal human condition. Right. Like it's, they all have these worries and yeah. stuff and they all have these things they didn't accomplish or didn't do or things they want and strive yeah. for. And there's such a human aspect. It really to is. The characters yeah. and their and you dialogue. Can just, you can just like connect with it so easily. There's, there's a line that is just so profound to me. I think Faye, the, the one woman was talking to Spike like towards the end of the show. She's like, you can't go there. Like you're going to die or something like that. Right. And he's so like, I'm not going there to... I'm not going there to die. I'm going to go there to find out if I'm really alive. Yeah. And no, it's just that's like, fucking ah, nuts. Get you. Oh, man. That's one of the best pieces. Yeah, yeah. That's one of like the craziest lines I've ever heard. <laughs> right. You know? Oh, Damn. Cause, cause, and then all of a sudden, like stuff starts connecting from that show because you don't really know. There's no backstory. You don't know why like Spike's like kind of like semi-depressed dude who's just like, like you, going through like the you, motions of life you get like, like oh he some, must have lost something in his past but you don't know what that is because they don't really touch on it they, they no, they do, do. A, they do a few flashbacks yeah. here and there but they don't give you the full fledged backstory no, they, of it they, right they kind of just leave you wondering and leave you guessing and putting a few pieces together right i mean they don't give you like the whole backstory but like those last two episodes yeah. of the show oh, yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. that's where they really put it to they connect it like you can definitely figure out why he is the way he is yeah. from all that, you know. 
Yeah, so Cowboy Bebop definitely up there in the tops for me. And I think another one that's just like might be a bit controversial, but gosh, you just like if you ever want to just like get motivated and just like freaking want to run through a wall for something. It's got to be Gurren Lagann. Like, <laughs> Bro. That show literally will make you so pumped up and just like forget about any negative just shit that's going on in your life. And just, you know what? I'm like, glad. I want to fucking run through a wall for this guy out here. Like for Simon, for <laughs> freaking Kamina, like the, the crew, right? I'm glad you brought that up because it's definitely, you know, we get shit from a couple people in our friend group because they're like, oh, it's stupid. Like they don't explain things well or yeah. like. Like, what does the fighting spirit mean? Right. Like, it's like, not it's not something that can be measured. It's it's yeah. not logical. Yeah, I'm you know, like, like get Trevor's out of here. a big Trevor's, proponent of yeah, that. You know? goes, yeah, it doesn't make sense. They didn't explain it. And I'm like, dude, this isn't Death Note. Yeah. You're not supposed to explain it like that. It, it's and the reason why that was such a big show for me is back to the whole like sobriety thing. It's almost impossible for an addict to view sobriety as a long standing thing, which almost prohibits a lot of addicts from even getting sober. Mm -hmm. They're like, Oh my God, I have to do this for the rest of my life. And it even prohibits them from even getting like a good week of being sober under their belt, right. you know, cause they just can't think that far ahead. So like the idea, or they just can't think of their life without that the substance, drugs, right? Yeah. It's like, well, what if I'm just sober for like a few months or a year, then I can go back to it. Right. And then you never end up getting yeah, sober anyway, right. you know? And it just seems like an impossible thing too. Cause you're like, when you're that down in the dumps too, talked about this with Justin too, is like when you're that down in the dumps and it's almost impossible to think of yourself as happy mm -hmm. or it's almost impossible to think of yourself as like fixing your life. Right. Right. So it's, it's just so impossible. And like with that show with Gurren, it's like, that is one of the most impossible things yeah. to, to be victorious at. Mm -hmm. Right. So to me, when I'm watching it, like when I was going through my sobriety and stuff, like I could be, I could like visualize, I just had to fucking <laughs> spray. spray spray the cat. He's literally yeah. like eating our feet right now. <laughs> He's a curious little fellow. Yeah, he is. It was just so impossible for me to like think of getting sober and then watching that show. I'm like, well, he's doing something impossible right now. Yeah. Like one of the most impossible things I've ever seen, literally like fighting this, this villain in space, like throwing galaxies at each other. Like and towards the end, right? But I mean, end. just thinking of where they started underground, right. not knowing anything outside of their their, their little home village underground, yeah. right? And then they break through the surface and see this big, wide open world, beautiful world, you know, and this landscape. And then instead of just stopping there, they're like, "Yeah, let's we're like, gonna keep let's going, conquer this, and let's see what else is out there for us," right? right. And just like this, this childlike curiosity that toggles their their interest and. Nothing's gonna stop them. Nothing's gonna get in their way. Any obstacle they can overcome, right? And, and it's just like literally drill right through it, which yeah. is like the whole motive of the show is like a drill. Yeah, you a know? drill is like the the soul. The, yeah, the, yeah soul the soul and the symbol of like you know your hope and just like any type of prosperity to come, right? And uh, it's just Simon the digger. You know, he's just a digger in a little cave, and turn. that's all he's ever been too. Yeah. You know. And I, so I think just start to finish, it, it's such a short show too, for anyone that hasn't watched it. I think it's like 25, 26 episodes. 26 episodes. Um, and these are, to all of our listeners too, this isn't American television, this is anime, so they're only 20 minutes long. Yeah, really right? short. And that one, that you'll just, you'll just fall in love with those characters. It's right. just it's so, and there's a lot of like com comedic. I, comedic relief. Yeah. Yeah. I fuck that to up too. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I go comical Co relief. Co 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 Is it com comical or comedic? Comical relief, I think. I think I yeah. said it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh it's got a little bit of everything too. Yeah, it really does. And that's the same thing with like full metal also. Oh yeah. For anybody listening that doesn't know anything about that one, that's like the story of two brothers that like lost their mom and this is like a world of like magic and they tried to use magic to bring her back and it backfired and it like took their bodies pieces of pieces of their bodies and stuff and the whole show is like them trying to figure out how to get their body back yep because the one brother's so, in armor yeah. and the other brother has he bonded um, his soul to, to the armor to the armor right because he was losing them in their little alchem alchemy spell that they were casting to try and bring their mom back right you know and um then you just go down that journey of them trying to get their bodies back. Well, they introduce the antagonist being um, this mastermind behind all these homunculus, they call them, who are... We don't want to spoil the whole show. Yeah, that's true. Just did. 
I mean, not really, but um, basically, like the the watch brothers, the show, <laughs> watch the show. The brothers are trying to figure out how to get their bodies back, and they start realizing that the whole basis of the show is literally surrounded around the idea of well, what is the value of one human life. Yeah, what is the value of a human soul? And the brothers are like trying to do whatever they can to like use alchemy or magic or logic or like numbers or like elements or like there has to be a formula for this. Yeah. And they they slowly figure out through the course of the show that, you know, they're not gods. Right. You know, we're not gods. We're just humans. Right. But it's also cool because not only is it like their struggle or in their interpretation of what the value of a human soul oh, is, it's almost every single character. The characters right? are so well Mustang, written in show. who's trying to become the fear of the, of the nation, right? His, you know, his contemplation with what's, what that value looks like. And then you look at some of the antagonists, what they're, what, the value they put on it as and so like you could see it in every single character scar who's phenomenal just in his character I mean, development i mean right? the whole show like touches base on a lot of things like genocide yeah like that was a big thing yeah, that was <laughs> huge yeah the genocide there's also just like a lot of killing but there is comical relief in the oh, show for as sure. well sarah likes that part she's like there's there's so much they of got that. some funny shit in there too but then yeah. like when it gets serious like oh, when yeah. shit gets serious it does they um, yeah they do a good job at that the other thing was like the concept of equivalent exchange. And so alchemy is act like an actual thing that was like studied, you know? Yeah. I mean, Will, Will tried to, I remember this was his early in his uh, anime watching career, if you will. And <laughs> I, he had finished Full Metal, one of the first animes he had watched. And he comes back to us and he's just like, there's got to be a way. There's <laughs> yeah. got to be a way to yeah. do this. <laughs> you know? well, it, well, I mean, like the, the alchemist of of old like did study like chemistry because that's what it's based on it was like chemistry and astrology and magic put together so it was like an actual thing obviously it's not magic though you know yeah uh but there is a, a concept in the show and in alchemy it's called equivalent exchange you know and yeah. that's just like chemistry like what you put in is what you get out like and that's kind of like the perspective of like what that value of um of, of a human is right and i think you can equate that to that equivalent exchange those are two very common aspects of right. the show right well, i always viewed it as like especially during like some of the shitty moments like i had always thought like and this was actually a, a frederick nietzsche quote that mm -hmm. i didn't know until i started reading nietzsche and it's like what doesn't kill me makes me stronger yeah. so i just always viewed like the law of equivalent exchange i'm like i'm going through so much shit right now right like life is bad right but if i can like get through this on the other side i can tip the scale yeah right in my favor right. almost like i just have to endure all the shit and it will get better on the other side right and, oh. it, and it was also like how much effort i put into things is what i'm gonna reap on the other side you mm -hmm. know so it was just like something i used for my work ethic almost yeah you know and so like when you think of just anime characters in general right i know something we used to always text back and forth about this was back in early mid college years if we were ever going through shit it's like yeah we just got to be like edward elrig right like come on you gotta like <laughs> fucking get your shit together this like and we would always like talk about these characters in anime and how we need right. to like aspire to be like them if we want to like get through this tough situation that we're in right? right is there like any characters and i just had mentioned edward elrig right from from full metal who's obviously one of your favorites but For if sure. you could think of like who are some of your other like big time favorite, favorite characters. characters and like what they mean to you and why so for i think it was my birthday two years ago and when i graduated college kath painted and made this this crazy painting with like 10 of my favorite anime characters and she printed out pictures of them yeah that was really good underneath them so i i'd honestly say like number one right now and it'll probably stay that way for a while it's gonna be like all might like <laughs> that's for sure He's um, pretty badass from My Hero, yep. You know, just to, you almost like idolize a hero. There's like someone who's able to like save people like selflessly. Yeah. You know, because that, you don't, you don't see that a lot. Everybody, and this might just be my perspective on things and it's, it's pretty depressing. You mm -hmm. know, everyone calls me a cynic sometimes, but sometimes I just feel like everybody's just out to make money yeah everyone's out to make money everyone's out to get theirs and like i get How it everyone's could I profit off of this whatever right you everyone's know, just... trying to work really hard and i get it you know we're all just struggling and trying to get through this together whatever the fuck we're in here on planet earth but 
you don't really see people helping a lot of other people out like selflessly. No. You know, and it's there's gotta be some type of ulterior motive around. And I think All Might's a, a cool character to to bring up first, right? And the reason I say that is because I think you had told me this a few weeks back, maybe a few months, I'm not sure. But I'm just like, man, All Might, really? And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, he is just like like such an amazing character because like you said, that selfless, just like the way he goes about his business. But I think what's so cool is that like, this is a man that that has some fear in him, right? Like he's a right. fear, like he, he has his fears and struggles, but when he's out saving people in the world, right? He just has a big smile on his face. Right, and yeah. No matter think, what, really. No matter what, right? And it's just like, you can learn so much from that. It's just like, there's going to be times where you might be scared or you might be struggling. You might be asked to do something for somebody or you might be in a situation like needing to help somebody. And it's just like, instead of letting that fear overcome you, it's just like, man, just freaking smile. Put a big smile on your face. And like that, just like those endorphins that are released, it's right. just like crazy what a difference not it to makes. Like, you know? Not to like crack yourself out and like smile when you don't want yeah, to, right. you know, but yeah. like, Maybe to just like change your perspective and it's like, you know, you can do this, right? right? Like, yeah, shit's shit's not the best right now, but like if you go into it with a smile on, you're probably going to come out okay, yeah. you know? And he... He just is the embodiment of that. And it's like, I remember one of the first... Um, there was a conversation with him and one of the... Uh, who's the lady before him? Um, Like the... The person who has the, his power yeah. before him, I forgot her name. But there's a conversation they're having and she's like, when you think like you've reached your limit in a fight and you've like completely used everything up, like just know like there's there's more in there, right? right. And like that's something we can equate and, and like use in our lives. And something I've been thinking about a lot in my running is that like the mind is going to set these like limitations. preconceived limitations on you, right? There's a really cool scene. He's fighting this villain dude and like he's completely tapped and like mentally has used every single ounce of his own like inner being and strength. And then there's like it kind of goes like takes a snapshot of inside of him and like there's this little fire that's going. Right. Like a little campfire type thing. And he's just like huddled around it. Like <laughs> this little skinny like All Might character. Right. And it's like. Like trying to protect this flame from going pretty out. much at his wits end. Right. And then he just like comes through with this massive just like burst of energy right and um, powers through it yeah just like yeah, it's inspirational as fuck it really is i was actually know? gonna ask like how see i've talked a lot on here about how like the anime has pushed me to be sober mm -hmm. um and also to get in good shape obviously yeah i was actually does it it inspires you like in your running obviously oh, yeah. yeah hands Definitely. down yeah Can i imagine. mean it's 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 pretty crazy like i think Anytime you you can pull from from another source motivation, like Anything. you know, you hear of like all these great athletes and all these great motivational speeches, all that, and like those are great. I use those, you know, motivational music, all that stuff. And anime is just another another avenue to pull that from. Like right. all my like I just mentioned like that that scene there, that character phenomenal. You know, Ed and Al from Full Metal. I think Kamina from Gurren Lagann. Kamina, right. Um, even like freaking Deku, like that dude is just badass. Yeah, like he's the, he's coming he's the around. All Might 2.0. He's know? coming around finally. Yeah, he, he was really... getting a lot of flack from the anime community yeah. about just being a little baby, you right. know. But like he's he's coming into his own now, which yeah. is nice. Yes. Um, we haven't talked a lot about Lelouch. Um, I was actually gonna bring that up. Code Geass is another one. Another I had to good throw one. In my top animes. Lelouch just like such a cerebral character, right? Like, I mean, very just thought like the way he thinks and analyzes and just like deduces all the situations that he's in into right. like just pure forms of logic is something that'll just get your mind thinking and, and and really just like open up different different avenues that you might not once thought were were possible it was also very similar to how i viewed full metal because in full metal you're constantly watching people like trade certain things for other things right right in order to gain something and like mm -hmm. he pretty much he pretty much like trained it traded his like sanity and his like he he almost like soul traded his human, yeah. his soul his humanity in order to like make the world a better place right you know and you almost think that like you see this journey that he's on and he's getting lost in it almost right. is what it seems right it's like he's just like off the deep end he's completely lost what his mission was in the first place when he first set off on this to like change the world for the better right and it's like you can just see like this demon 
that is just slowly eating away at him right. as he's starting to like lose sight of what his actual goal and mission was in the in the show. But then as they finish it and wrap it up, you're just like, wow. He was <laughs> controlling that the whole time, right? And you, you didn't know? yeah, I was like you didn't it, even know either. Yeah, yeah it was so, it was it was a very good show. Code Geass, phenomenal, definitely a big one. So yeah, going back then, so we have All Might as one of your characters, right? All, yeah. You know, Ed, I mean Ed L from Full Metal, that's that's gotta be one of them, right? I'd say Gone. Uh I was gonna say Greed from Full Metal greed. is also one of my oh, one of my phenom- favorite. Which my favorite. Greed? Obviously the Ling Greed, Ling, right? The yeah, second Greed. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I've, you know, you got Ed and Greed, Kamina from Gurren Logan, mm-hmm. Spike from Cowboy Bebop. Yep. Mugen from Samurai Champloo. Okay. Yeah. Man, it ugh, we can't even get into that one. We talked about Cowboy Bebop. We're not going to talk about Sam yeah. Rashi and Blue. Also very good one, very episodic, and very enlightening. It was directed by the same person who mm-hmm. did Cowboy Bebop. You know, I'd say Light from, from Death, Death Note. Note. Yeah. yeah. And then we said Lelouch. And let's see, one mother. You know, I'd, I'd say Aaron from Attack on Titan. Yeah. Aaron, he's he's got his moments for yeah. sure where you're... And, and that's almost like you're questioning like Lelouch. Right. right. We, we're not going to get into any plot points here. I don't really want to spoil anything for anyone. Yeah. Um, but when you think of like anti-hero people, right? Mm-hmm. When you think of like a character that has antagonist and protagonist aspects, which would be Lelouch, yeah. right? Same with Light from Death Note. Right. And then also Aaron from Attack on Titan. Yeah. To anybody who hasn't watched any of those shows and has watched Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta is an anti-hero. For sure. Yeah. It's one of the most well written characters ever, and which a lot of anti heroes are based off of him in anime, mm-hmm. honestly, after that. And then I, I got Inuyasha up there in my top ten okay. characters too. Did you you said gone already, right? From well you said Hunter. gone, yeah. yeah I'd say you. gone. Yeah. yeah. And without like getting into any like spoilers for that show, like he like near the end for like watching obviously like you said, the journey of these like twelve year olds. Right. Killua you know, coming from the assassin family, gone coming from this island. To just like he's... become friends and like it's a very wholesome journey. And then it starts out as like not really a kid show, but like it's a teen show. And then it literally ends as like, that's like almost an adult show. Oh yeah. You know, for and sure. It, it was almost like to watch a lot of these characters that I I named and like these shows, like I've stated before in, in the episode, it's like to watch them like lose things. It was to watch them like triumph. Like we always like in, in Marvel Mm-hmm. That's why people get around it. It's like to watch them triumph. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves a good hero. Yeah. Everybody loves a good underdog story. Um, to me, watching like these characters like lose whatever it is and then come back stronger. Right. That was huge. That's yeah. huge for Re- me. Resolve is is a focal point of so much anime. Right. Right. Like uh, the Japanese culture in general is is very much deeply rooted in this this idea of just like resolve like what is your resolve like not so much like exactly you know what happens to you but how do you respond from it like l- let's see like what 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 does this turn you into right right can you use this as to develop you or yeah. are, you, are you strong enough to get through this right essentially mm-hmm. so yeah those those characters are have all impacted my life in one way or another these yeah. shows that I've named too. It's like when I'm like losing creativity or like interest or I just don't have enough gas in the tank because we've talked about the topic a lot on on Feel Free and it's like just being overworked, mm-hmm. you know, in the 21st century. Yeah. Jobs that we don't necessarily really like, paying bills we don't really know why we have in the fucking first place. Right. You know, we're just run ragged. Sometimes I need a little inspiration and I watch one of these shows just to remind myself that I do have a little more in the tank. Yeah. That... I am on a journey right now and some parts suck, but yeah. if I can if I can muster up through this shit, then I'll be good on the other side. You yeah, know, straight up. And it's the same obviously like it's the same thing with the sobriety. Yeah. As well. I couldn't tell people that are struggling with like addiction one specific thing that helped me because it was the anime and it was also playing video games and having a good support group and stuff. But I would definitely tell people who are struggling, definitely give one of these shows that we mentioned like a shot. Oh like yeah. You're going to learn something about yourself if you truly sit down and like watch it. Yep. And pick it apart. Yeah. And I think one thing that gets overlooked in anime 
also is um, when you look at the soundtracks and the the intros and the outros, yep. right? Um, there's a lot of American TV where I'll just like skip the intro. I'll skip like the outro. There's there's a lot of anime where I'm just like excited for that part. Now I'll skip right. through some of it too if you've you know if you're ever watching multiple there's episodes that, in a row. But there like, are some that are bad though. Yeah, we'll no, for you, sure. Yeah, yeah there some is. That are bad. But like there's there's some really really well done intros and outros and not to mention just the soundtracks in some of them cowboy bebop probably one of the best soundtracks in any show yeah you, that you can any show in the history of television right it's, like it is just it's the same it's thing with, so well done with attack and full metal like they have actual orchestras yeah you do that it's almost like in star wars they have right. full-blown orchestras making the goddamn soundtrack you yeah, know. so I think that's an aspect that gets kind of swept under the rug when you're talking about like favorite animes and characters and just like you know all the what that means. But it's there. like yeah, the soundtracks yeah. are they're, they they could be overlooked sometimes, right? Because they're like we were talking before we even got on the podcast is like we definitely have I have some anime intro outros or soundtracks like saved on my phone. Oh, for sure. You know that I either get like put into my workout playlist yeah. you know like before i go on a run i'll sometimes throw one on that it's like all right i need to hear this right now right, right. you know like i need to it just helps with performing yeah you know it does <laughs> what else should we talk about in terms of this like i feel like we did a pretty good job yeah i think um if we want to just run through maybe like a starters list for anyone that hasn't really you know experience too much you know with anime they don't really know where to start like what what would you recommend as a good starting point for somebody who who's trying to uh, venture into the the world of anime because it could be a little bit overbearing and right. you know sometimes you might get a recommendation that doesn't really suit what your interests are and obviously for us to give recommendations you could take that with a grain of salt as well but true you know i would say you've got a lot of experience in watching anime so for for anyone out there that that would is starting from scratch what what would you recommend they they kind of start with so i'm always going to say full metal alchemist brotherhood is at the top of the list like yeah. i think that even if you're not even going to watch any anime for the rest of your life that you should still watch that show mm -hmm. and as we say these things like to our listeners you don't want to read subtitles or watch it in japanese you can watch it in english too we prefer yeah, the english watch, one is really good yeah the that. english one's good for that but our group and myself included, we, we usually watch things subtitled because the Japanese voice actors have a little more emotion sometimes. Yeah. And even though we have no idea what the heck they're saying. Right. But it's just like, it sounds really good. Yeah. It sounds good. It just gets the you emotion. fucking pumped. Yeah. yeah. I've learned some words too. Yeah, know? of course. So I would put <laughs> Full Metal Brotherhood, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood at the top of the list. If that one doesn't vibe with you, next I would go to Death Note. Yep, Death After Note. That. I think Death Note is probably as close to American type TV, like American as you'll drama, get. detective, mystery, mystery, thriller yeah. type stuff, right? You know, like there, you're not gonna find. There's maybe like one or two like comical moments mm -hmm. in the entire series. So like, if you're looking for like a just a serious like on the edge of your seat thriller, right. you don't know what's coming next. Like it's Death Note. Yeah. And if sure. you really like Death Note, because that's a shorter one, I think it's like 40 or 50 37. episodes. 37. 37, yeah. right? And that one, you're like, damn, this is amazing. I would follow that up with Code Geass. Code Very Geass. similar, but I think it's a little little more cerebral. You're going to think a little bit more in that one. It's a little right? more Japanese, too, yeah, I'd say. Like, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely like more anime-ish. Right. Yeah, the yeah. code. Um, after that, I would say... I'd definitely say Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop, okay. What do you think of, we haven't really touched on this one yet, one of my personal favorites, which I actually forgot to mention this, what? but Sword Art Online, just, I, I'm i sorry, I just absolutely love it. The one first of my season. Favorites. I'd say, I like it well, all the way yeah, through yeah, I, Alicization. Like, yeah. there, it goes through a dry spell and a, a dry patch in a couple of the middle. I wouldn't put it in my top 10. Person, like, okay. Wow. I wouldn't put it in my top 10. Yeah. No. I will say that the... It had potential, like the first twelve episodes, like that first season. Mm -hmm. Like when I watched that, I was strapped to oh, my yeah. seat. I'm like, this is fire. Yeah. This is so good. Like it's got the romance. <laughs> it's got the the, the fight. It's got the, the fighting. It's got the hero. It's got like the the over plot can be it phenomenally is written. so good. Yeah. And you know, it's just had a couple bad seasons. It you did. know, and 
I wouldn't say bad, but it definitely didn't Different. live up to the hype. It of, did not live but, up to the hype. But it, they did finish pretty well. Right. The last few seasons well, were really well done. Well, we were also talking about a list of like things that I would recommend to people to watch. Yeah. And if we're going to pick like five different ones, I don't. You wanna, wouldn't put that I in would there. not put that okay. in there. Yeah. I would put like. Now, if you're, if you're big into gaming. Yeah. If you're big into gaming, right, definitely and, Sword Art. Then I would say Sword Art, is, Sword Art Online is a huge one for you. Right. If you like video games and you like that that whole aspect right i think that's a that's a big one it's just basically about a kid that enters a virtual world and they get stuck in the virtual yeah, world gets and stuck in there and he has to pretty much fight his way through yeah, like this mmo, and if MMO you, game so if you die if you die in the video game you die in real life too yeah like the headset and he, was a, he was a beta player in in the game before it came out so he kind of knows how to navigate through the world already right and basically just becomes this complete badass in the game and tries to save everybody right so right. if you're if you're big into gaming I, I would say that one you should definitely i would also say with. like for the people who like marvel out there to definitely watch my hero okay my yeah, hero my hero's yep. up there and my, my hero academia my last show if you did not like the four that i named which would be full metal alchemist brotherhood death note cowboy bebop my hero I would also try Inuyasha, number five. Okay. And that would be for people who want a little longer journey. I love like feudal Japan stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't know, the feudal feudal era or whatever. Yeah. You, like this, that old timey Japan stuff where they're mm -hmm. like really into like demons and stuff, yeah. you know, like that stuff's cool. And it's a romance too because it's, it's really cheesy. Yeah. I like it like that though, you know. Right. And that's a little different than the ones I, I named already. So yeah. definitely put that as number five. Okay, I would say mine would be number one, Hunter Hunter, just because it's my Hunter favorite. Hunter. So you know, Hunter X Hunter, as people say. Um, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I think, is a, a great starting one. We didn't even say Attack. I didn't I was, say uh, that's okay um, for sure. And Lagan, so nice right. twenty six episode one when we were talking about earlier, just really motivating and just like all about like the spirit of of people and just you know very good wholesome motivating type show. And then. Um, Attack on Titan, a little bit darker, but just <laughs> phenomenal. Really just, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's just, it'll it'll just take you on a roller coaster of emotions. Um, See, I was so giving well I was done. giving people five that I would recommend, but that wasn't like my top five list. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 for sure. And then right. uh, the fifth one that I would recommend would be it's like Code, well, Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online. Yeah. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> so yeah. those those five I would recommend for people, just because they're they're all different in their own way. So they're they're all very different shows. Right. And um, I think once you watch a few of those, you're you'll be pretty much hooked in, and in your anime journey will begin. So, True. Yeah. So I think we did a good job on this one, then, right? Yeah, I think uh, you know, hopefully gave some good recommendations. Talk a little bit about our anime journey, and right. um, yeah, just really excited to uh, see if anybody hits me up yeah in the dms like hey yeah. i tried some of those shows you know or you cool. know we would love to hear what um what anyone else is cooking up out there what they like um speaking of cooking up what's that one anime food wars food wars <laughs> that's a little out i would not recommend that to i would not recommend that to first time watchers that is definitely no <laughs> only watch that if you're a seasoned veteran <laughs> it's like iron chef for anime yeah so, so <laughs> you can find you could find anything out there in the anime world pretty much but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the show we talked a little bit about you know what anime meant to me and or to joe and i how that helped us either through our sobriety or our our physical mental emotional wellness goals and our views on the world and stuff we did give you top five list from each of us on what we think you should definitely try really appreciate everybody coming out y'all have a good start or rest of your day stay up and feel free